Good evening, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining JKIT CXO Disrupt. It is fair to say that over the last couple of months, we have seen seismic shifts and uh, unprecedented changes in the way that the businesses and the industries uh, have to conduct them it themselves. Today, we actually have. I'm very pleased and privileged to have such a experienced and also um, accomplished uh, panel with me uh, joining me this session. And uh, today we are going to spend a little bit more time talking a little bit about the retail landscape. Some of the things that we will be focusing on will be about how do you redefine your purpose? How do you reimagine new possibilities? And think about the ways that you have to do business differently. How do you remodel yourselves to be agile and mobile? And all of that need to be built on a simplistic, resilient, data-driven platforms. So without any further ado, I would just like to start the panel discussion uh, with the four panelists. I'm sure you would have seen our opening uh, poster that we kind of introduced all of our four panelists. I'm coming to you, Ramesh. Uh, I would like to have your opening remarks and then uh, we'll move to the other panelists uh, moving forward. Ramesh, over to you. Hi, good evening and welcome to the penultimate uh, discussion on reimagined retail. I think uh, one of the core reasons we thought this, this will be an opportune uh, webinar in, uh, in, in today's context. Where, like Rohan said, we've never seen such an unprecedented kind of uh, change which is happening in such a short, short span of two, three months. And uh, what is uh, more kind of uh, foundational to this whole uh, change is that uh, we've seen that people have been really unsettled from their very foundation and the, and the roots in terms of having to question their very existence, the way they do business, how they serve clients, and how they looked at their business, right? So today everyone talks about uh, new normal or the next normal, right? But very few actually can really with clarity say, this is what the new normal, next normal would be because it's going to be a tough one to define, uh, so to speak. So increasingly that we are figuring out that uh, the new or the next normal can only be born by we collaborating, we probably co-innovating and co-creating. And uh, which is no different to what was happening in the last uh, couple of years. We are the linear value ecosystems or value chains are perishing and we were seeing the birth of value ecosystems. So today, I think I'm happy to actually be a co-panelist with Charita Kasuri and uh, Lahiru because they come from different spheres of the retail sector. And I'm sure that the fusion of different aspects of retail is going to be the new or the next normal of retail, and which is going to be powered by tech in terms of digital and IT, which is going to be the enabling and the facilitating factor, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm very interested to learn the, hear their points of view, as well as engage in the thought provoking discussion. Nice having you here, thanks. Thank you, Ramesh, and I really appreciate it. Um, I think what I would do now is to move to Kasturi. Uh, I think, um, Kasturi, would you like to give your opening remarks about our topic? Over um, to you. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks, um, Rohan, for uh, inviting me to be part of this panel. So, as Ramesh said, look, this was a phenomenon which, which affected the whole world the same or in different times at the diff and different peaks and different times. But in Sri Lanka, what I see is we've got uh, we've got impact from the global perspective. We've got an impact from a local perspective due to disruptions uh, in demand and and the channels. And we have an impact uh, for certain industries through um, uh, the border closures as well. So from uh, on a retail perspective, it is mostly access to essentials from a local consumer's point of view. And during the peak of lockdown, we found that, um, so we have, I'm exposed to uh, the healthcare space and we have an FMCG consumers uh, business as well. So healthcare space, sadly we realized that 
about 60 to 70 percent of our population is actually having one or more of the NCDs. NCDs meaning the uh, uh, non-communicable diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular, or hypertension, which meant they needed these medicines to help. Um, it was not an ill. It was so that how do you get access to these? And the and the ecosystem had to change rapidly. Like I mean, we saw it changing. It's, we saw collaboration happening between government to private to the last mile government again or a or a entrepreneur to give this putting the give this consumer access to what is needed. Then in the other side, consumer side of it, uh, we saw that uh, we saw the whole uh, channel disruption happen. And we saw the digital space being activated. Uh, some worked, some didn't work, but we found consumers alternating, trying three, four different channels and, and uh, uh, kind of getting what they wanted, not being too choosy, getting what they wanted through different ways. And so it opened our eyes out to a lot of stuff. So um, these are a few challenges we've had, but the biggest challenge I personally would have would face is that when we mobilize our staff being essential services, how do you keep them safe? How do you put your consumer in the center, but keep your staff safe? That was a, as a leader, I felt that was the biggest challenge. Day to day, how do you keep them safe while you serve the consumer? Um, so that's basically my few thoughts on this, but I'm looking forward to listening to the rest and contribute. Absolutely, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. And I think very interesting. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions, but uh, of course, uh, we are trying to get Lahiru and Lahiru will join us shortly. In the meantime, I'm moving into Charita. Charita, you are on and I would like to hear from you. I'm sure there will be plenty of questions. I'm already seeing the attendees count go up and I think we are pouring in with some questions. Charita, for your opening remarks. <coughs> Charita, I think you're on mute. Maybe just... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, I do not want to repeat what, exactly what uh, Ramesh and Kasturi said. I think we would have also been hearing the word unprecedented uh, uh, stuff that uh, we in uh, any B good BCP two wouldn't have had uh, uh, the, the the script written to handle a situation like that and so on. Now, from this point onwards, is how I would approach it. Uh, and in that context, uh, as Ramesh to mention, there's a lot of unknown. So I think Charita, would it be the end of COVID? Would it be? Uh, am I clear? Charita, I apologize. I think there seems to be a slight drop. Would you mind just maybe take a couple of sentences back and start again? Am I clear now, uh, Rohan? Yes, very much better now. Thank you. Yeah. So I think let's take it from where we are today. And where we are today is that there is a lot of uncertainty in front of us. Uh, uncertainty to the extent where we don't know whether we have really got the COVID out of the system in Sri Lanka. What would happen over the next few months? Uh, would it? Would there be another spike in, in the situation? Would there be lockdowns further? is one angle and in that context too when we looked at and spoke with the customer too uh, one of the biggest concerns they have today is about their health and safety uh, in addition to the economic downturn uh, that possibly could also happen so the uncertainty is is the norm unfortunately today and how i would look at it in that context is that how agile our business is to face this uncertainty how agile are we to change our business model overnight? How are we to continuously develop uh, and bring in new changes into our business model is what I think is the most important thing for us to discuss and how agile and how, how will we take this forward is how I would like to approach uh, today's conversation on uh, because that is the norm. The uncertainty is the norm, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, Charita. Yeah. That's really, really good to hear. I'm sure, as I said, uh, we have a quite a lot of people and there'll be some questions coming up uh, and we will definitely be coming to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining. And I think we, you just, we just concluded our opening remarks. Uh, it is an era of where 
you know consumers are really democratizing uh, the technology is really democratizing consumers are yielding a lot more power of choice brands power of brands are getting uh, kind of uh, i would say limiting at the moment so these are the topics and a number of challenges that we are going to discuss welcome to reimagine retail jkit cx or disrupt uh, so i'm rohan and i will be your moderator and i will be now coming to the first question ramesh i think uh, this is your brain child as well so no other person is uh, suited to take the first question so you know one of the first questions i wanted to ask you is about you know you have been an advocate of uh, ecosystem thinking and also simplicity uh, what do you think are the factors uh, which can either impede or accelerate some of these the things uh, at the moment in the current context so rohan i think one of the good things i feel covid has done to us i think uh, sarcastically a lot of people said that covid is now the ct of the organizations which i <laughs> tend to reluctantly agree because it actually woke a lot of people up right so the a uh, lot of us were in in our comfort zones uh, growing our businesses organically making maybe taking even consumers for granted uh, certain of the factors in terms of choice in terms of value so the the real question is if you really look at uh, simplicity i always look at uh, if you if you put yourself in the customer shoe right and look at the points of friction in terms of experience and engagement right sometimes the customer lives with it because he doesn't have a choice or he feels hey it is is fine right and the business also don't think it's a big enough a problem to solve because hey i i anyway have my business right so today covid challenge lot of those basic presumptions right so that is where i think i think the when we talk of new normal and next normal you are really re redefining your purpose in terms of not the goods and services that you sell but how you sell and how you create value and how you sustain it right so that is where i i am talking about the ecosystem thinking because if the problem is not big enough you are not going to concentrate your energy or your your investments into it but when you in your value ecosystem focus on a few things where you can create massive value you can focus on that piece of that value value ecosystem and then collaborate with others to fulfill the end to end proposition would that right. the way that would that be the way that you are prescription for companies um for to embrace this is that the way, way that you are thinking is the best way to move prescription is a pretty strong word okay. i know i have a i have a guru to prescribe but i would think we will be stupid not to look at it all right good so next question i will come to kasuri um i think uh, kasuri i think uh, you know you are in a very interesting place because uh, pharmaceutical always had a bit of a iffy kind of a situation in terms of you know digital and all these different things uh, so my first question is that you are a manufacturer and a distributor of farm right and uh, you have been seen the pandemic and how it impacts you um, what are the essentially steps what are the necessary things that you uh, you you as you as an individual as well as a leader of your organization have taken uh, to be resilient during these challenging times okay um so firstly i think uh, you were right uh, so pharmaceuticals and healthcare is a highly regulated business right and hence the um, the struggle of uh, getting a simple e-commerce platform to work while being uh, compliant according to the regulator's requirement was the challenge however like covid uh, one thing like ramesh said covid um actually broke down policy opened up policy in some areas between government private sector and uh, that we did aspire for those only to get familiar with that concept so like any any uh, platform health care as well didn't get adapted it's two ways we didn't imagine we thought sri lanka was too small and uh, the online adoption is going to be small the challenge of getting compliant uh, right across the value chain is too costly um and the same way the consumer thought was used to a brick and mortar look and feel kind of a uh, thing yep can you can hear me 
I can hear you. I think there was a small lapse. May I just request you to speak up a little bit in your phrasing of the question? Yeah, no, I think there there was a small glitch. So I think it's back. Yeah. I don't need to do that. Charity is back. Yeah. Charita is actually connected, but uh, for some reason he's kind of silent. I think we are trying to get him on track, but we will get him online. So uh, let me come to you, Ramesh. In the meantime, until we get uh, this Charita conversation. Charita is back. Charita is back. Oh, Charita is back. Fantastic. We've been wanting to get hold of you, Charita. Um, so Charita, uh, there's some interesting uh, things happening with your landscape over the last couple of uh, months. I'm sure. Uh, there will be many questions coming that way. We are already seen uh, some questions to Kasturi as well. Um, so Charita, the first question I wanted to just ask you and uh, make sure that you know we are kind of uh, come to it is that you know how did last couple of months have been for Kiehl's as a brand as a re uh, retail store with uh, which had very strong ambitions of growth over the last couple of uh, uh, years, and uh, how did you? Kind of, uh, you know, handle the lockdown, subsequent lockdown that happened, and what are your learnings? And I think there's a lot of quite, a, may have been a quite a lot of learnings. So, so, would you like to talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. As somebody said, uh, uh, it is a, is a life time that we spent over the last four weeks uh, to eight weeks. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I would like to add on to what from what uh, what uh, Ramesh moved on, uh, and. and the fact that I think that uh, the agility they have talked about, uh, there is also uh, uncertainty, and that means uh, how do to keep ourselves afloat is one option uh, aspect of it, and the second one is there will also be the uh, ability to maximize on opportunities as well. How do you really reap into and get to that? Now, if you look at uh, what we have doing. Uh, over the last few years, is that we have been concentrating on the brick and mortar, and I, I, I and it's something that, uh, as a Ramesh, as the CIO, has always been pushing me to look at the e-commerce side. Very honestly, uh, let's be very open here. And in that context, we have been putting it in the back burner, and just concentrating on the within a couple of weeks, we had to really scale up our e-commerce site and and servicing this uh, this demand that got that that got uh, that came through so in that context uh we and it is a journey that we started today but it is not a perfect journey we started and know the end of it at all and what we also see is that with the change in the landscape and i i think what covid also did was changing the landscape overnight. And, and if you look at the business models that in Sri Lanka people have been doing, they have been very comfortable. They have been in that comfort zone that they think, I'm comfortable, this should work type of situation. But what right. COVID did, I, th I think it was also a good nudge uh, that came in to push people beyond that comfort zone, lateral thinking coming into place to look at and the need to basically think differently their business model was also something that covid presented and 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 this also becomes an opportunity for somebody to really think differently look at it out of the box and to see how you are going to uh, uh, to 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 cope and uh, remodel your business as well and that is the opportunity i see for ourselves in our organization as well is that? Yeah. I think. Uh, How do I make? What? 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 What's it? Sir, maybe you now? might want to repeat. Repeat the last few. I think you, we lost you for a bit. Yeah. 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 I, I think. I think. What? What COVID did was it fast tracked a lot of stuff in this uh, this country in the business environment, and that will. And I think it was a blessing. And, and it's up to the business leaders now to use this opportunity uh, and to maximize on it. And, and that means sometimes uh, coming up with different business models. And of course, e-commerce, digital uh, also would play a big role in this aspect as well. And that is the opportunity I think we should not waste. And as business leaders, this is that opportunity in front of us. 
Right, great. So, I mean, uh, Charita, I have... I mean, we have a bit of time, so I will. I I have to ask some questions, Sonny, but I'll come back to that. But I think, Ramesh, I have a very interesting question for you. Like, uh, you are obviously, you know, man of many, many. Uh, you wear many hats, to say the least. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you is that. Bye, sir. <laughs> Uh, so, as the CIO of one of the largest, if not the largest diversified conglomerate, you know, uh, how has you or what have you done in the past and what are you deemed kind of uh, adopted and did during this uh, crisis scenario, uh, you know, to help the business to manage as a level of normalcy and to continue to achieve some of the business objectives they may have set. I'm sure there would be revisions on it, but what, what exactly the role that you played as the CIO? Okay, I think let me probably rewind to about maybe 10 years back before I take the question on. Because I think fundamentally what we also need to understand is a lot of these business is not a Lego, Lego block, right? It's not a Lego toy for you to break and rebuild in, in no time, right? But if you have the fundamentals right, the 20% can be reconfigured. In no business, in a situation, you have to reconfigure the 100%, right? So I think if you have the right platform, the right tools, the reconfiguration becomes much easier. Right? So why I'm speaking, uh, I think elaborating on the dance, if you look at when in 2012, we moved actually from uh, on-prem Lotus to 0365. And one of the very first to make that leap of faith. And when we did, people were asking, hey, why on earth are we doing this? You know, why, how is Equus Cloud for us to do this? So today, I think if you look at when, when COVID struck us, right, we seamlessly moved to work from home environment with the least possible disruption as a corporate with seven, seven sectors and 60 plus businesses, right? So today, I think when even Keys went through the challenges, we were able to get on a call even in spite of all of this, right? So today, um, no, before COVID, it's not that we didn't have all of these tools. Now, we could have had this webinar about five years back, but we thought booking a hotel and having this would have been the fancy thing to do, right? So our mindset has changed, right? Most of the change is about the mindset change. It's not about technology. It's not about is it possible or not. It's about we wanting to do it, right? So today, this webinar is happening. We've reached in thousand plus people. If we had done it in a traditional fashion, it would have been 100 times more costlier and wouldn't have been possible. Right. So, so today, that is the level playing field and the potential technology brings for you to transform a business, right? So even if you if you look at what we went through, even with Kiel Super, right? Kiel Super was doing, before COVID, 100 orders a day, right? So obviously, whenever I had chat to Charity, I said, hey, you're telling me to go e-commerce platform, but what's the point? This is this is what it is, which is true, right? But then when the situation arose, it was a matter of time for us to get our act together in terms of scaling to the need. May not be, as I said, we will never be perfect, right? But for us, every day was an MVP. We were like a startup, right? So actually that was for me a welcome change to a corporate of a stature of John Q's as well we immediately were able to change the style of execution into startup mode. So every day it was like an MVP. We had a new feature the next day morning, right? So because we were listening to the customers, the feedback on the ground, okay, this needs to get fixed, let's prioritize. So it was becoming a like translating from a from a, a running a corporate into running a startup, right? So that take took a lot of shifting in terms of how we got used to doing things and how we had to do things, right? And we adapted, we embraced. And if we can sustain that speed of execution, I think anything is possible. So Ramesh, are you saying that as a result of this, with all due respect, 150 year old diversified conglomerate got a lot more agile as a I result? Would think, so. I would think so. I would I would go back to actually the Lucas's books that elephants can dance. Oh. I think big corporates can also be like startups. Good. A lot of people think corporates can't match the startups, and I am of the contrary view that corporates also can be like startups, if you want it bad enough. 
I can already see the line of questions coming as a result. But uh, Kasturi, I'm coming to you. Um, you Rohan, can I can I uh, Rohan, can I add something here? Sure. If you don't sure. mind. I, yes, yeah, I, I think I think Rohan uh adding to what Ramesh said. Sometimes we I think the key point here is to follow in the customer and that and that is basically uh, just to take you through the step by step stuff that we laid, landed from day one uh, of the lockdown was following that customer. So I think I think we should not overthink. Sometimes we do a lot of overthinking, thinking of that uh, beautiful, large platforms to all that. And uh, and that that takes you and makes you feel a little worried about the investments that you're going to do but simplify based on the customer journey now when you started that lockdown a situation where the customer didn't have any option at all he he was conf comfortable even getting a pack of products coming right. to your home rather than that whole assortment that was the right. starting of that car then another week's time now he's got this pack now he wanted to have something a little bit more extra so then we landed about 90 SKUs uh, on a platform and then you started. That 90 became another 150 because he wanted something more. And that was the journey. Then by the end, he wanted that ability to shop that entire shopping list. Then you dropped in a WhatsApp uh, ordering mechanism where you send a WhatsApp order and you got delivered. And right. now, if you were still going to be on that 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 assortment or the uh, offering only now we have become obsolete and now they want that full range to be available for them and now we need to be scaling up to be delivering that so so what i'm saying is that sometimes you may uh, sometimes you may need to take in a modular form and and that would mean getting that and, pa and going through that customer journey and adding on as we go on, rather than putting that entire platform, a huge investment and, and not getting that return as well, because ROIs would also c come into play. So in that context, I think it's important for us in that, uh, in that uh, journey to have some idea of a journey that you're mapping that journey and that investments come in as you hit a certain threshold so that you don't upend your investment and get into a bit of a ROI issue, issue as well. So that is all important that you visualize and map out that journey and then put a plan together is also come into play, I would think. Good. Charles, I'm sure that I mean, I, I wanted to kind of interrupt you because there's a whole other level of, you know, what we need to do from a supply chain. People don't really realize and think Ramesh is we are definitely a lined up question. We want to kind of get to also because I think a lot of people weren't very forgiving at a certain time as well and all lack of understanding. So Ram, uh, Kasturi, I think you've been very silently waiting. Um, I think it's time to get your opinion about a few things. Uh, I really, really like to find out because I know that, you know, primarily uh, your organization and your product range had a quite a bit of a dependency, if you if you don't mind me saying that, on physical stores and the distribution. I mean, that's a, one of your key ways of doing it. and. Uh, I mean, then came COVID-19 and I think that would have abruptly stopped a lot of that. But uh, okay, there is need for FMCG and all that, but pharmacy, I mean, medicine is another kind of a thing that people are constantly needing. And uh, my question to you is that, you know, how did some of your thought process about distribution and your stores, physical stores kind of thing, how we did that? kind of a change as a result of assumptions got changed as a result of this uh, and also like uh, what are you how are you looking at you know digital channels now um, as a result of what happened um, just wanted to get your thoughts on that um so yeah um Rohan, yeah on the on the um, from healthcare perspective yes it was primarily dependent on a on a physical store purely because uh, the store is not only to purchase, they act as consultants in terms of uh, at the point of dispensing the medicines, right? They have to advise the patient. So that's why I keep saying it's regulated. So what happened, um, and remember again, I'm bringing back to the fact that 70% of our medicines, the market is on, on NCDs, things like diabetes and cardiovascular, which is month on month, people take uh, have to buy this. 
uh, they have to either so one thing which came this our citizens there is a 40% or 50% of the citizens who are dependent on the uh, state ecosystem either taking it from the state clinic or whatever and then the rest of you us who go to a, uh, to um, the pharmacy um while we were playing around in in the digital space in some ways um uh in colombo um the, the here the solution is when when covid hit how do you get people to have access to the essential medicines remember there was panic of covid and there was panic about the supply chain disruption so there are people kind of panic double medicines are going to go out of stock and they were trying to physically camera so they they understood the importance of open the opening the brick and mortar purely because that was a access point were available uh when they opened it they found it was creating too much of chaos so immediately i think from a government to the private sector to um, the so it works through a distribution network um and uh, the distributors and the retailers had to get together uh, the regulator had to permit certain collaborations and you found that uh, getting access while the physical last mile store was used for inventory dispatch and uh, they had ways of um, patients some patients were getting passes and coming in uh, sometimes the retailer had a small ecosystem of the tuk tuk drivers who were there within that village or whatever who would pick it and drop it off uh, you had even the postman taking the prescription getting the prescription i mean through so they had these whatsapp things mobilized uh, the government mobilized whatsapp numbers for each um, a pharmacy and but which whether it worked or not i don't know but each of the communities knew a pharmacy close by and they could work with even the postman coming in so what it taught was was that people over a couple of weeks managed to get access to what they needed but it taught us was that um, you 70% of the patients need not come into the store because this is month on month of of regular stuff uh we need to work with uh, everybody in that ecosystem because the person on the last mile is closest to the consumer is the most agile right and uh, so we found things like um government bending uh, giving us uh, approvals to get the logistics going up to the first distribution point you had competitors like the big importers willing to co-load and take it to the distribution points Uh, and distributed out purely because having minimum raw border across you had pharmacies saying if you um, if you can't drop it off i'm willing to pick it from you so when i think there was there was one industry which all worked for the patients yes there is uh, revenue which came in but remember all pharmacies were not open and it was purely a big cry or the voice of a consumer saying they need medicine so we found uh, while we don't have a structured solution in the long term short term it became agile and you could get that activated to the patient purely because different actors came in and they connected through some form uh, technology would have been whatsapp or or whatever they connected through some platform and they got it done um so it it you it really brings me open a big question for us of going forward yes there would be a role for physical but i think the role of the physical and the role of the pharmacist can be different and how it gets delivered can be different how the patient's request gets access can be different um i don't believe one company or one should control the value chain at this right. point of time more people in the value chain who have economic activity uh, is beneficial because you i think the 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 whole ecosystem would survive only if everybody takes part in the economic gain there uh, the second aspect is the person last mile person closest to the consumer is the one who can be most agile because uh, one day he wants one thing tomorrow he'll change like charita said I mean I am a consumer in your in your keel shopping my requirement change week on week when I was desperate I was willing for I was settling for whatever was there when next week okay you have choice so I want a bit more and then the third week it's like why don't you want to get I used to get catching the process <laughs> so same the <laughs> consumers would change my only thing is I think we as a country as consumers also I'm talking we should not change back backwards 
we should change progressively forwards being open up to thinking look can we use digital a bit more can we be more creative in this and let's just see how where it takes us i mean let's not oppose change change as organizations is stuff change as consumers is stuff so for we taught both parties that change is necessary sometimes and gives us opportunity Great, Kasturi. Thanks a lot for that answer. I wanted to kind of uh, interrupt you, but then I wanted to make sure that I kind of see the end of it. I think you should not be having a problem with KLs anymore. The two people who probably makes a lot of key decisions for those organizations are with you in this panel at the moment. Uh, I think I want to just take a break uh, and just make an announcement for everyone who has joined us live on Microsoft Teams as well as who are watching this on Facebook Live. Um, team, I do apologize. We had a bit of a technical glitch, and as a result, we haven't been able to uh, get Lahiru. We are still trying to get Lahiru on board, and uh, he was uh, obviously something very important because that he brings a very interesting digital native kind of a thing. So I would obviously have to throw some additional questions at Ramesh to uh, uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, but I think uh, one of the key questions there have been a series of questions that I'm getting. I'm getting some information from Facebook Live. Please them. Please uh, allow uh, them to come through, and uh, we will be taking up those questions a little bit later on. So let me just come back for a moment. Uh, come back to you, uh, Ramesh. I think there is an important question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, Kasturi briefly touched on some of the some one very important uh, or three important terms: collaborate, collaboration, co-innovate, and uh, co-create. I think that's a that's a term having worked with you for a while. I know that you are very passionate about. Um, I think uh, what is I wanted to ask you uh, that uh, you know we need to do all of that at least if one or two of them, I ideally all three of them at a given time. Uh, but these are also very kind of a uh, challenging times and probably uncharted about how do we do this. Um, so and can be very risky and also very difficult, right? And I think uh, what I would like to know is that. What is the advice? Because you are a person who is trying to do that. Who, who I know for a fact that you deep rooted, you believe in these three things and uh, ecosystem, which we spoke about in the first question. Um, would you like to add on that and maybe just give some uh, inputs for us? Ramesh, I think you're on mute. If you don't mind, apologize. I think if you listen to Charitha Kasturi, I think it's very obvious that. Uh, what what we've gone through because of COVID, uh, like like what Kasturi highlighted, both the seller and the buyer has stopped being a perfectionist, right? Which is which is probably the fundamental in a startup, right? You will you will because uh, traditionally we've always tried to be a perfectionist. We want to solve a problem to the nth level before we went to market, right? So here, because of the because of the time pressure or the consumer demand, or there was a bigger problem to solve, you will always will go with the near perfect solution because you understand that that can be fixed, right? So the backlash that no, on in the past that a, a producer or a supplier got for not for not being perfect is becoming more tolerant, and I think this is not alien to us. If you look at um, uh, I, I know we are on Microsoft Live, but if you know Microsoft used to get trash for bugs left, right, and center, and they had the most number of products which came to market, right? But but the whole learning from there, even I, I remember Bill Gates when he was leading, he used to say that ultimately we have an incremental cycle of fixing this, and if we know how to fix it, right, we should not be afraid to push the boundaries and to innovate. Right? So that is what I, I feel that. Uh, we have to achieve because by restricting the linear value chain, the what we could do is limited because our resources are limited. If you can collaborate, you have a multiply effect in terms of what you could do because you you obviously are creating value to a segment of people, right? So I think Charita probably is a better person to talk about the penetration of modern trade today, right? I think compared to the most of the uh, Developing countries in the region or developed countries, I, I think it's 60% and maybe Sri Lanka is around between 15 and 20, right? There's so much of upside, right? And and today you saw everyone because of the mom and pop stores were closed, were after the supermarkets, 
during the last two months, right? That was a shift which happened, right? Because people did ultimately have a need which was unfulfilled. And today, and, and I was surprised after 20 years, I saw fish being sold down my street, right? Gas being delivered by pick me, right? Yeah. Whatever you couldn't, you couldn't imagine happened. Yeah. Right. That ga gas delivery is something very interesting, Ramesh, you mentioned, because I never, that was the first time for me also as a result. I, I, I was thinking, why wouldn't people come up with that before? Uh, again, again, uh, I think the, the interesting fact is, now even I remember having this conversation with Mr. Megapedia some time back, right? Are you in the business of selling cylinders or are you selling gas? Right? So if you're selling gas, you jolly well can predict this household uses gas or, uh, or buys gas every three weeks. Same thing for Charitra, same thing for Kasturi. If you really dig deeper in the data, you can actually populate 80% of a customer's consumption and the frequency. But it wasn't a bigger problem for us to solve to invest and dig deeper into the data. Right? So the issue is, when would it be timely? When would be opportune to invest and look at the data that we're sitting on? Right. So that's the million dollar question to answer because then it's about scale. So by being everywhere in the value chain, you can't build scale. Right. So that is where I feel collaboration gives you a bigger problem and, and, and will give you return in terms of investment because you're focused to solving what you want to solve. And you're letting the other part that you can't to someone else who is better at doing that. Good. I think there's a lot of questions coming up, but I would just like to take a moment and maybe um, take one question uh, from Eric Winston, who have just uh, shared a question and then we'll obviously continue with it because I think uh, I don't want the questions to pile up. Um, Charita, let me come to you first and maybe I'll ask those questions going around from everyone as well. Um, you know, first of all, he's asking uh, if we are to list the certain certainties amidst the uncertainties, what would they be? In your point of view, being heading that operation uh, for Kiehl's, what are those certain certainties that you are seeing with the uncertainties? Uh, you are on mute, uh, Charita, just one second. You probably want to unmute your mic. Yeah. Yeah. I think the certainty for me is that there is going to be still the customer, customer need for food and grocery, that that is a certainty that 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 I know. And secondly, there is also a certainty that health and safety worries are going to be an important element. That is a certainty in a in a in a situation where there is still uh, a vaccine not found. Uh, then a case where you are not sure whether the person next to you is uh, having that virus or not. Uh, so health and safety is a certainty, the worry. There is also certainty in this current context of the economic uncertainty, uh, whether whether your disposable income is going to get impacted, uh, then is it going to be a case where uh, where where overall overall things are going to be tough. I think those are the certainties that we we as a uh, FMCG retailer has understood uh talking with the consumer doing our own research because we need to be ready for the next six to eight months and in that context this is the based on the study that these these are the the the, the stuff that is working in the minds of the consumer and and it is those that we are working through today to see how do you how do you maximize right. in a situation like that and how do you do your strategies around that to ensure that your uh, that that we confirm to the consumer that you shop or get your stuff delivered to your home, that your health and safety is impact uh, is not impacted, then that how do you help them in a in a economic uh, downturn to ensure that they get their food and grocery uh, sorted out without too much of uh, expense impact. I think. Those in my mind are the certainties today that we have to work around. So yeah, I wanted to ask you this question as a follow-up uh, to what you said. I mean, uh, thank you for that answer. I'm sure Eric would uh, comment back 
on that as well uh, you know charida but with the little knowledge i have i know that you all are considerably serious about it and technology um, i know it may not be quite evident to outsiders but that's a matter of fact i can state with a lot of uh, confidence a uh, lot of has changed uh, we know that and i think what i really would like to find out is how how important uh, is the kind of uh, work that you are doing with your it and digital in uh, realizing some of these aspirations that you are talking about in wanting to achieve and those certainties that you spoke about and uh, also i just have a it's a two part question the second part of it is you know what kind of uh, new possibilities uh, do you think that your business might uh, must facilitate and adapt also in the near future yeah i i, I think uh, rohan uh, it is uh, it is no secret that we have been working on ai uh, data analytics over the last year or so and we because simply because we saw that that is the next big opportunity for our business we went right. and sorted out our brand the uh, the the re the rebranding to all that so that we had the foundation necessary to uh, to handle the consumers for the next 5 to 10 years but then came the data anal analytics and that is an area that we we were we saw a lot of opportunity in and data analytics also would nicely dovetail with the e-commerce business as well because you need to be having data also in that context as well uh, one thing that we have also seen is that we had to pause a bit to uh, to take a view on the consumer uh simply because we our our concern today is that the the consumer behavior whether it will be a lot different from what it was over the last few months or or the year so we need to take a pause today to take a view on how do you want to approach from this point onwards so data right. and but we also see the fact that i mean these are type of discussions that we are having today on how even in this context is there anything more that we can do to really use data uh, to help us to in our uh, follow up strategies uh, post the covid as well uh, and that is something that 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 will take forward secondly in the case of uh, uh, the the road map of the of the e-commerce part i did mention that what we did up to now but we think there is a lot more that can be done here in after if you look at it uh again taken from kasturi when when she was desperate in the first couple of weeks you were willing to wait for 72 hours to get stuff but it is not the case now the stuff needs to get delivered at least within 12 hours a customer would want to have a broad uh, range of products that guy is not willing to wait for a refund to come in 7 days i am talking through the e-commerce uh, noise that was going on hitting us and in that in that road map that is the need for us to take that holistic view it is not only the platform how do you start delivering uh, pr your promise right. much faster and in a much more reliable state and for that also to happen that linking up with the different digital tools also needs to come in so that is a type of road map that we are looking now uh, uh, to be landing over the next few weeks in so that so that we continuously start giving a better experience for this consumer and he or she starts uh, having a positive experience as well so i don't know whether i answered the question but data has a play, place uh, but of course we need to sort of sanitize the data a bit now uh, taking into consideration uh, that there will be a certain shift in certain certain aspects that need to be considered but at the same time uh, moving into different uh, uh other tools are also needed to give uh, a better experience uh to the consumer because that is the only way that we can have the stickiness with our platform as well as that e-commerce uh, new channel as well uh, i i think with that i mean charita you asked me whether you answered my question i think you did but i think it also opened up a very interesting door for mr uh, ramesh i think i have a question for ramesh to ask ramesh i think the charita's you know kind of uh, what he mentioned about the data and the value of it i know that uh, you have done quite a lot of work in that space what can you uh, so i have multifaceted question for you um, first question is that how do you see this data journey and how does 
you see this getting adjusted or is it getting accelerated as a result of this pandemic, number one. Uh, number two is that we also are seeing this mushroom type of platforms uh, post COVID-19 and very various fulfillment types. Uh, where are we going with all of this? Because it seems to be very fragmented right now. Uh, and also while they are trying to cater to what we call the latent demands. Um, so I would like to take uh, get an overview from you for those two questions about it. Ramesh, I think you are mute. Apologies. Maybe you. Yeah. Sorry, no. If you if you look at, I think uh, this rewind back to what happened in China, right? So the way China managed pandemic, right? Uh, they were quick to come out with the app. I don't know how many of you are aware that uh, which turned in. Uh, so they have supposed to scan a QR code. That QR code turned into green, amber, and red, right? Right. In any of the facilities in China, across China, uh, every citizen was mandated to carry that app. Right. And right. if that person did not have a green, he was not given an entry into any of the premises. And if he had AMBO or it, he had to go to the nearest hospital. But that is that, is that his symptoms are probably positive towards carrying the coronavirus. Right. So the issue is. Uh, 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 country which has 1.3 billion population is trying to solve a problem at scale because there is no other way of doing it. Okay. Right. So so the issue, the, the question about data is, it's not about how much of data is enough. How big a uh, problem are we trying to solve and what's the quality of data we have to solve it. Right. So simple things like even today, I think, uh, Yesterday, you and I went, walked into a pub, right? Mm. And Jai. So these guys were now being mandated by the government to now take information of people who are coming into the pub. If, if in case someone is tested positive, they are supposed to quarantine the entire lot who was in the pub, right? Now, this is in one facility in Colombo. Now, multiply the problem at scale. Okay. Who is going to gather this data and who is going to assess now this guy had a positive symptom and how are you going to do the real tracking of these individuals? Right? It's a problem about data, mm. right? So similar thing when it comes to business again, it's, it's it, the the challenge that we have is like what Charito or Kasturi said, every customer has a demand and today they are flexible in terms of how they consume or what gets delivered, right? Until and unless they have a better choice, right? right. So yeah. who is able to give that better choice will sustain that value in the long run. Well, that connects back to what you just said, Ramesh, that it's hard for us, a single organization to be able to deliver all of that, right? Yes, exactly. That's very, exactly. That's very, right, got it. Let me let me just segue a little bit into Kasturi because I know that Kasturi, you've been silent, so I want to make sure that uh, you are kind of thing. So, Charita spoke about you know data and customers. Ramesh obviously speaks a lot about the power of that and all of that. Pharmaceutical industry, uh, how important is uh, is for you all to know that? Have you what have you what do you think have been the progress you have made? over the last couple of years in in really you know developing that is it now being accelerated as a result of this you know what are your plans about getting to know your customers a little bit more is that are there regulatory challenges around it i mean just give us a summary about because i think today it's important to be stay close to customers right and their needs um so i need to answer that a different way here because right. uh, like like rame said uh, the customer the challenge the problems are in large and uh, being in pharmaceuticals um, sometimes like we can predict most of the uh, requirement because there is a trend of data there is market data of what kind of stuff they take so as hemas um, one thing we have been do doing is we, we don't talk about our purpose our purpose is about, about healthful living uh, and it's about making the nation healthier in, in this so healthier doesn't mean actually uh, selling drugs. It means making 
uh, are people actually not to take the drugs, be healthy in what you eat and your lifestyle. So in this context, this, the data we need is, that's the data I keep talking about, we have 70% of our medicines consumed are essential. Right. As, a, as, a, as businesses, we are willing to take a hit and say, we, I mean, it's not about profit. Can we 70 percent people who are you consuming this? Can you come out healthier? Can you not be diabetic? We have a 20 percent every year. There's 20 percent of people come becoming diabetic. Right. And these are people who are screened. There's so much who, many who are not screened. And like they say, diabetes is a silent killer. It gets you complications about yeah. your heart, cholesterol, and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's the data we need to give the government and to support every stakeholder because whether we like it or not, we are an aging population. If we but, don't crack that part of it, we are going to have an unproductive country. Uh, the so aging population has to be moved. So that's the health kind of data we are looking at. So right. as part of our purpose, we are looking at taking our data and seeing where can we work with communities to make them healthier. So we have data as, as to what we sell in which, which region, which uh, township, all that. So there we are trying to see, we have been trying to work with the government as well. It can be not done alone. It's a public-private partnership where we go out and try and bring this messaging in about half, mo most of this is because of the lack of knowledge of how to be healthy. Uh, we in urban societies are being a bit more healthy, walking about and COVID brought that out in us, right? We saw the lanes, everybody walking, whether they wanted to get away from the houses and the wives, I'm not sure, or the husbands, but everybody was walking on the road in the evenings, right? But yeah, sure. so honestly, we need, we have the privilege of knowing the repercussions. So we are using data of what we have in how we sell for another to live our purpose of making the country healthier. So it necessarily be count, it might not make profit for us, it might be counterproductive, but that's a call we are taking. But we have been using this data and we are on a journey of trying to bring this diabetes thing as a singular, the MCD space really, right. as a singular journey to bring the uh, the numbers down. I'm sure right. it will take 10 or 20 year impact, but that's something we would be uh, using data to impact. Right, got it. Thank you. Thank you, Kasturi. I think uh, we have been live and uh, we have been uh, uh, discussing various topics for the last uh, uh, one hour or so. I wanted to make sure that uh, we have a steady stream of videos coming in. I mean, there are things that we want to be very clear about. Okay, now I think we are all good. So I think there have been some questions that have been posted. So I want to just maybe uh, take couple of questions and uh, it's a shame that some of you have not bothered to mention your names because it would have been nice to be able to have uh, specific uh, questions being asked by specific people. Um, so one of the things is that, uh, you know, there's a question for you, Charita. Uh, as modern trade, what is your suggestion to change the flow layout post COVID? Uh, since we earlier driven by consumers, uh, uh, Sorry, by consumer behavior studies. Second question: What category categories pick up during the pandemic apart from the essential items? Uh, there's a twofold. One thing about: Will there be a significant changes in your flow plan based on some research or some kind of a methodology? The second part of it is: You know, is there a pick? What are the product categories beyond uh, essentials that I have really picked up? You see, as a as a the head of the business yeah uh, i think uh, interesting time interesting question i think uh, going back to what i mentioned before about the data data part of it uh, uh, uh certain so-called use case we are going to roll out uh, uh, just after the co uh, after after Aurudu, if the covid hadn't come was a different assortment of products uh, where we based on the actual movement uh, analytics that we did we found that we there was an opportunity in changing the assortment that we carry in certain stores. Uh, but we had to pause it uh, simply because we wanted to now to understand how the consumer uh, buying habits have changed. So it, it is the same story in this uh, uh, flow layout as well. While it is still a little too early for us to understand how the buying pattern is going to be, how and what they will be buying to all that. But it's something that we will observe over the next few months 
uh, before taking addition on any change in the layout, uh, whether whether their buying habits would change accordingly. Uh, so I would I would answer that we'll wait and see, observe, and then take a, a, a informed decision based on that. In terms of the uh, the categories that pick, I will answer that question this way. Where unfortunately most of the uh, uh the the uh the 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 delivery models that that were present for the consumer unfortunately uh did started delivering only the essentials even a certain certain websites had a limited range then it would have been either packeted items then as ramesh said if you look at uh the vendors who walked down our streets uh had a limited range so invariably the consumer started picking only those they they had no other option of buying the 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 products that they would have wanted uh, on a normal basis so it's it's a little difficult for us to say yes it was only the essentials that that got picked but it got picked simply because of the fact that they had no opportunity of buying their entire basket so because that it, you can't come to a conclusion and say that uh, for example if some exotic biscuit was available uh, whether the customer would have bought it or not it's difficult to say simply because there was no ability for that consumer to buy it. so right. so because of that uh, you couldn't come to a conclusion right so great charita i think one of the important questions i think this is something that uh, i think there was a question raised as well and i the question was raised a little different so i mean rephrase that maybe ramesh you could add some value here there was a quite a lot of you know what people are seeing in the front end about digital platforms and ordering and payment gateways and being able to pay during various ways and a lot of banks got you know have to open up a lot of uh, limitations they had all of that but the challenge have always been wasn't so much that right it's the back end the supply chain the end, connecting from farmer to consumer was a much significant problem so as the CIO and who works very closely with Charita on on this front, uh, Ramesh. Uh, how do you think that we need to start thinking about reimagining uh, this this entire supply chain? Because I think that's a secret to a great successful retail uh, operations, right? I think to a great extent, I think what people don't see is what probably has probably has happened with Kales in the back end, right? I think they probably had the most sophisticated. Uh, uh, ERP and then the back back end uh, enterprise warehouse management system, which was actually able to scale to solve this problem at scale, right? So we had obviously issues with the with the with the front end one of the channels, right? But if the back end wasn't geared, we wouldn't have been able to scale, right? Yeah. So today, as I said, that actually that took about five to six years to build. So that is exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. So the if those uh, all the jigsaw didn't fall in play in the puzzle, you can't ultimately do an end-to-end -end delivery, right? So to right. sustain that, obviously a lot of pieces have already fallen fallen in place. And myself and Charter were having chat about this collaboration commerce piece, and we said, okay, let's over the year work on this. But COVID beat us to it, right? So the the challenge is that that, that can't be an excuse. But when this happened, that's the reason we had to pivot. We had to do things faster. We had to do things not in the planned traditional way of releasing RFPs and evaluating platforms and stuff, but we had to do make good of what we had. And that's exactly what we did, right? right. And with that too, you bought an interesting point about platforms, right? Yeah. So as you know, John Kiss had moved into Azure as a platform on the cloud almost five years back, right? We were actually a proponent of mobile first, cloud first, and driving the transformation. So today, as you know, John Kidd does not own any data centers. Our 70 percent of our applications run off the cloud, right? right. We have few application hosted with SLT in their data centers, right? So these have all been enabling factors for us to transform and 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 pivot at the speed that we were able to do even with keys, right? So I think that's the agility that I'm talking about. So even today you want to federate with someone. If you want to federate, uh, collaborate with PickMe or Uber, it's an API call away. So pardon me for my jargon, it's what we are saying is, is loosely coupled, reconfigurable, 
connecting the dots. So today in tech world, when we say connect the dots, it's about APIs, right? So we have that level of maturity to now say, even if you're talking about payments, I think one of the frustrating point for uh, online commerce today is lack of digital payments. Last mile and, and also probably not having a proper credence in terms of a, yeah. a digital identity card, right? Which I think the government needs to solve that. So if you look at what happened in India with Paytm, right? Demonetization really made Paytm mainstream, right? Yeah. So in Sri Lanka, I feel COVID, because now cash is becoming a stigma, will make digital payments to an extent a mainstream, right? There, there is an opportunity. Once digital instruments are coming in into payments, rest of it also, the adoption will become faster, right? So that's the platforms I'm talking about. So the banks have to be play a part, the last mile delivery guys have to play a part, the supply chain guys have to play a part, and the stores have to play a part. So today, I think the coinage of the panelists is an interesting phenomenon because I feel Takas, Kiel's, Hema's, powered by tech, probably can be the new normal. I was actually, actually forms. I, I was actually going to come back, come back to that and tie the, some of these pieces together. I wanted actually Kasturi. Uh, Kasturi is connected with us, but for some reason, I think uh, we have uh, we're trying to get her video on, but uh, she's connected. She's with us, so I'm just waiting for her to come online. Uh, Kasturi, you're back. So good, you're on mute, but I think we can uh, have you here. I think that will be awesome. So Kasturi, I think Ramesh threw a very interesting one at all of us. Now he she was he was saying, what if all of us combine our strengths together. Uh, unfortunately, Lahiri was supposed to be on uh, on this, uh, and we could not get Lahiru uh, today because of a technical issue. And he apologized uh, for not being able to make it. Um, you know, what if Kiel's, Hema's, and Takas come together? Wouldn't that be like a customers or customers like a dream uh, to be able to make this happen together? What are your thoughts about it? So I, I, I um, so if we come together and collaborate in how you build a, a marketplace or a platform to give access, I think more the minds, the better the outcome. Because without having a, so what we realized during COVID is what we do well as organization complicates simple matters, right? And uh, so what we learned at COVID is simpler the better. So, I mean, at, at FEMA's insulin, we have so many patients who are dependent on insulin. Within two days, we had to get a simple thing where somebody could put a prescription. They used to come into the office to get that 15% discount. It's a small segment, but without insulin, they can even die. How do you mobilize a simple solution where they can come and we deliver it, right? Yeah. So, why, when you get these three companies together, yes, it can give a better platform to give a reach. But up when we come and all three being big companies have to be socially responsible to get the ecosystem to work. So there are one thing I learned is as, as a consumer, uh, all products are not coming from big companies, right? There are small companies and, and now there are a new thing with border closure. There are alternate good products, good for you kind of products done by SMEs and entrepreneurs. How do we get them? It might not make the listing in Kiel's uh, shelf. Right. But it is a choice a pair customer has, and that might be an alternate choice with border closure. How do we create a platform? It would be great if your platform and your real estate is opened up for as a DC um, uh, Charita, and where any SME who doesn't have to invest in warehouse, it doesn't have to invest in a platform, could list with you all. Uh, they could, you can have a way of getting the orders coming in through an aggregator or something, and you all can gain that. It's an interesting space. Um, I think we, it's a good place where we could help SMEs also. We would have, there would be economic benefit for all. There'll be a revenue model. But SMEs don't need to replicate what we shouldn't have as a country is a hundred different platforms. What you should Deep have. Is, tomorrow. Yes, and I think you all have done a lot. It may be good if you all could see how this can be moved in where everybody can use it in a way that it, you don't uh, you don't recreate it and and your brick and mortar is also there we have brick and mortar can we leverage that and help yeah. to work 
excellent excellent i love it uh, i don't know whether charitra would you like to uh, answer that question because we are almost running out of time because uh, yeah, uh, uh, very yes, uh, i think Aspen i think on that from you. yeah one one thing that uh, in uh, i did mention uh, about the consumer what they are what they are worries for the next uh, few months is that but one one thing that we have also understood is that on the community front is is an area that we we would be playing uh, hard on simply because there is that need and one thing is that case of uh, loss of income uh, and how do you how do how can we play a role uh, either on the online site or on the brick and mortar part of it to enable that market marketplace is something that we 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 work we have already planned to roll out i think one one area that uh, in terms of this collaboration uh, i think it's important that uh, one thing is that when you're collaborating you're linking up with a certain partner is that that the value system uh, of the different parties are similar i think one, that is the important thing i think i think during this period you you found that certain certain uh, partners certain uh, players with a different certain value 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 system uh, did get caught uh, in terms of found out so i think that's that is the important thing whether your values of integrity caring because in the, the day you are going to hand over a set your certain customers over to that platform provider or or to that extent so in that context that those are the type of discussions that would need to also happen uh it's because that is going to be important because if if for example if i'm going to hand over my consumer to a particular platform to manage uh, on by my behalf does my, does that guy's value system link up with my value system you know those are the type of conversations yeah. that could should also do happen because end of the day uh, that is the way that uh, that everything can get linked up as well so i think charitha i think uh, you, at least hopefully this will start creating that initial or at least the initiation for some of these interesting and meaningful conversations to have because we don't live in the same kind of a era or same kind of a situation a lot of things are very unprecedented so to speak i know it is a cliche word everybody uses so uh, gentlemen and madam uh, it's definitely uh, been a pleasure having you all uh, we have spent almost 1 hour 15 minutes uh in conversation with various degree of topics various spectrum of topics about reimagining retail how can we unleash uh, the true potential uh, of it uh, what i would like to do now is maybe come to you kasturi as the first one and uh, get your closing remarks uh, and uh, maybe we'll close the session after we go from kasturi charita and also to ramesh afterwards kasturi over to you thank you and um, yeah. it was interesting actually listening to from a retail's perspective uh, while we use retail but i think one thing i would say is uh, we don't know what the new norm is we are still adjusting to what we are seeing evolving um, so what we know for sure is uh, every day we need to it, things change the so consumer who is changing we as businesses have challenges in our business models but what i know for sure is that um, this simple is better less uh, less is more and uh, we shouldn't actually discount the fact that the convenience i i saw a lot of convenience in the elowlu truck and the, um, the pole truck and all that around the lane right and i am struggling as a consumer to go back into a shop and waste time in traveling and stuff so i think it's up to we need solutions to cater while the consumer is not would like that convenience would like that choice as well so it's not a easy thing but uh, let's see how we can evolve to a better lifestyle i'm sure it will be a better lifestyle for consumer and it will be more more margins for a business to kind of get this model right um so it's i am excited because with covid brought a lot of opportunity for us to think differently so what the difference is i have, how we can think it's endless but i think i personally would encourage everybody to take this time to actually bring your creativity out and collaboration is important you cannot be thinking i'm going to own the whole value chain and control it it doesn't work you 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 kill the opportunity 
Thank you, Pastor. I really appreciate it. I uh, I'm unsure whether there's a small error with uh, some of our video streaming that is going on. I do apologize if there is, and it could be subject to bandwidth limitations here and there because we have been broadcasting for one and a half hours, and uh, video tends to take up a little bit more heavier bandwidth than usual. Uh, Charita, for you, for your closing remarks. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I think it was uh, something that I really enjoyed. I have a few things that I would like to keep is that uh, it will be a good time for each business to understand what their core purpose is. Why are they there? Uh, that will give you an insight as well as to understand how are you going to deliver that core purpose. Uh, the second one is that uh, following your customer, uh, the customer is changing and it, it would have changed quite rapidly over the last few weeks and it will continue to change and following that customer and and satisfying his needs comes into play and and in the, if you set up that purpose and the custom in my in in your in your in your paper uh, then you you will just start adding the dots in between and that will make you uh, sort of uh, stand out compared to the the rest of the uh, businesses i think that is how i would end uh, in these uncertain times just look at your purpose ensuring that you your value systems are in place and, and then look at your customer and following that customer and trying to satisfy his needs in this difficult circumstance. Great. Thank you, Charita. And uh, Ramesh, for your closing remarks. Uh, Ramesh, you're on mute, I think. I was saying I have shared a lot of these thoughts on social media as well. Obviously, the first priority for any business to stay, stay in business. Right, be resilient, look at options of holding forth. Uh, whilst an, uh, an obvious option would be to go back to the drawing board in, with a clean slate. Uh, in looking at, because obviously when the assumptions and the context changes, your business changes. Looking at, if I were to start this business today, what would I do differently? Right, And that probably redefines the purpose and also gives you option in terms of reimagine the possibilities right because otherwise you're always kind of constrained by what you're doing right so then looking at okay if this is this is what ideally you would be doing and this is what you're doing then is there a transition plan from this to that so that is the problem the remodeling game that uh, i speak of and that's where these collaboration co-creation co-innovation and platforms and the ecosystem thing thing comes into play but while he's doing that, we should not forget the customer. So we should always aspire to simplify the journey for the customer, right? And that's why I said, whatever we do, it has to be intuitive for the customer, right? And more option doesn't mean it's simpler. Less option is simpler. And can we automate a couple of these with data? And right. then look at how do you create personalization and engagement, right? So that's that whole thing that I would take in terms of order of priority, build resilience, reimagine your future then remodel the way right obviously it's not going to be easy but if you collaborate i feel you will be able to concentrate on a bigger problem and solve it at scale and then let others to do likewise and then build that value ecosystem which can be configured based on a need rather than staying nailed down and then look at utilization great thank so, you so last thought is i think uh, uh, i just wanted to talk about uh satya narila's book hit refresh which had a huge impact on me and that's why i keep using the word hit refresh so yeah. this is the time for every one of us to hit refresh on our business and what that outcome would be is left to us to determine right so stay safe stay blessed thank you ramesh it's been a Absolute pleasure. Uh, I would like to take a moment and uh, read out a paragraph which I thought was really, really interesting, and then maybe we can wrap up. Say, change is seldom easy, especially when the future is uncertain. Big changes, especially, require commitment and can attract organizational antibodies. To effectively scale new business models, established retailers should pursue small moves, smartly made testing, scaling, and incorporating the most successful ideas as foundations for their evolving businesses. Uh, thank you to all my panelists.
Uh, it's been absolute privilege having you with me. Uh, kind of informative session. Uh, I wanted to say that I myself learned a lot from this session. Um, for I see almost 100 people already online, and I think uh, thank you for so much. I'm sure that you found it very very useful. Uh, this is JKIT CXO Disrupt uh, Reimagine Retail session concluding for today. Look forward to seeing us with another exciting session that can uh, discover and reimagine how we can build a different industry altogether. Uh, thank you very much and uh, stay safe.